Man, that fight is tough. We got him to 0.1%, but we're out of time. So I'll have to call it. Oh, well. It sucks that we did meet in Rage. Anyways, we'll meet up next week. I'll see you guys around. Hey, where is your materia? Materia? Oh, I ignored that. PowerPoint could have be to my DPS anyways. Okay, so this is likely you. You are making your way through Eorzea, diving into dungeons, working on that big ol' MSQ. But you have some questions in that noggin of yours. What are these circles on my gear for? What do I do with these items? Why won't the voices in my head stop? I can't answer all of these questions, but I can introduce you to Materia and Spirit Bonding and how it can make you a powerful disciple of war or magic, or a crafter-gatherer extraordinaire. If you end up learning something, be sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe. Ringing the bell will let you know whenever I upload new videos too. First off, what is Materia? Materia are special items that can be attached to your armor, weapons, and tools that boost stats. They come in many ranks, and with the release of Endwalker, ranks 9 and 10 are the highest ranking materia. And how do you get materia? Well, there are two primary methods. The first one is something called spirit bonding. The game doesn't really do a tremendous job of explaining this, or at least most people tend to ignore the text box that does explain it. All gear that you can equip has a spirit bond percentage. As you gain experience by playing the game, you know, raiding, doing dungeons, killing enemies, crafting, or gathering, the spirit bond will increase in percentage. At 100%, the little green icon indicating that piece of gear on your inventory or person will turn white. That means you can extract the materia. Open the character screen, right click on the piece that is at 100% spirit bond, and extract it. Of course, as with many things in Final Fantasy XIV, you do have to unlock spirit bonding. This is done at Central Thanaland north of Blackbrush Station. You will meet a goblin by the name of Mutamix. The main story quest also takes you here, so it's hard to outright miss. The big issue with spirit bonding is, while it is a free and passive method of getting materia, it doesn't let you get precisely what you may need. Sure, crafters will get relevant materia as well, healers, tanks, DPS, and gatherers. But what if you need crit, but get spell speed instead, and you play Red Mage? Thankfully, the second method is a bit more deterministic. Leveling Roulette at max level will give you a special item that can be traded for combat materia that you want. Expert dungeons also drop relevant materia. Hunts also reward this item, these Anthro Clusters. Similarly, the Beast Tribe currency can be used to buy materia, as well as hunt currency. Crafting and gathering materia can be bought with relevant scripts, purple for rank 10 and white for rank 9. Failing all of that, you can simply buy materia off the market board. It is never terribly expensive for just a few. So really, you are never awash for materia. Spirit bonding is just an additional passive way to pump more materia into the economy. This stuff is cool and all, but who can actually meld for me? Well, you can. Or a friend can. The only requirement to meld rank 9 and 10 materia to your level 90 gear is a level 80 or hire a crafter. This can be a friend too, if you right click on someone's health bar frame and request meld, they can do these melds for you. Let's say you don't have any friends. You can find materia melders in any major city who will gladly meld your materia. For a fee, of course. Something to take note of. Each piece of gear is capped on how much of one type of stat it can have on it. If a piece already has a ton of crit, you can't meld yet more crit. Thankfully, the UI will warn you if you're about to attempt to do this. So, don't do that. Okay, now let me throw out this crazy word here. Forbidden melding. Don't panic. What is forbidden melding? Or overmelding as it's sometimes called. On crafted gear, or really any piece of gear that doesn't say advanced melding forbidden, you can actually meld more materia than slots you have. 
up to three additional melds. There are some restrictions and downsides to this. Notably, you can only do one extra max rank materia in an overmeld, then you are forced to use the lower rank. So, for example, on my crafter hat here, I can meld two rank 10 materia normally. The third meld is also a rank 10, but it is overmelded, aka the first overmeld. The final two melds must now be rank 9. So, less stats. Think of it as diminishing returns. There is another big thing with overmelding, in that there is a large chance of failure in which materia is broken in the process. The first meld is a 17% chance of success, the second is 10%, and the third meld beyond is a pitiful 7% chance. Wow, you might say, this sounds awful, and yeah, it is! Thankfully, overmelding is almost exclusively important for weak one savage raiders trying to get an edge, or crafters trying to make a lot of money in the economy. Overmelded gear is most nearly 10 item levels stronger, and that is definitely important in savage raiding. But for anyone else, it is just an expensive endeavor. If you are playing the game casually, you wouldn't really need to worry about it. I also wouldn't really worry about melding gear while you are leveling either. You will probably replace the gear before ever too long anyways. If you feel like you were at a complete loss for what materia to use in either your Disciple of War or Disciple of Magic, Crafter or Gatherer set, remember that the balance has a lot of these best in slot lists with best in slot melds. Another thing to note about melds in general is when you are synced to lower level content, Melds will disable if your gear is of a high enough item level. Well, that's it for my video today about Materia. Thanks for sticking through and watching the whole thing. And if you haven't already, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you very much, and be safe out there in Eorzea.